Thomas Blass Off by author Peter Gaffney and Katie Woolley and illustrator Mattel. Early one morning, the engines in Tidmouth sheds were woken up by loud revering and whooshing noises. Today is the big rocket launch, Thomas cried excitedly. Who wants to come with me to see it take off? Count us in, shouted the other engines. Three, two, one, blast off, peeped Thomas. Follow me. As they excited, as the excited engines approached Knapford Station, they saw the large gray tip of the rocket poking above the station building. But as they pulled into the station yard, the engines could see that the rocket was in pieces. Oh no, said Piercy. The rocket fell apart. Don't worry, chuckled Gordon as he chucked over to the group. The rocket is too big to bring to the launch site all at once. So we have to take it in pieces. You mean we get to help deliver the rocket? Asked Thomas. Yes, said Gordon. We can take one piece each. I'll take the nose one cone because it is very fragile. I'll take the satellite, said Percy. It lets you beam signals down to earth. I'll take the shell. It's the body of the rocket. Toot, Allie, awesome, cried Nia. Diesel raced over to the flatbed, holding the wings. I'm taking the wings, he said. I've got the booster, said Kana. This is what makes the rocket go. Go, go. But what can I take, asked Thomas. All that's left is this tiny cube. I wanted to deliver something big and important. That's the rocket's battery, said Gordon. It is a very important part. The sky filled with gray clouds. Let's go, said Gordon. The rocket can't launch in the rain. Nia had stopped in front of a tunnel. Thomas raced along the track towards her. In his hurry, in his hurry to get going, he forgotten to take the battery. The, sh the shell's too tall to fit through the tunnel, Nia sighed. <coughs> Can you help me by hitting that switch? Then we can go round the tunnel, said Nia. Thomas raced up the hill to pull the switch. Mission complete. Both engines moved off around the tunnel. Down at the dock, six headed engines crowded around the launch pad as Cranky the cr Crane began to assemble the rocket. This is out of the this is out of this world, said Thomas. Where's your piece of the rocket, Thomas? Grumbled Cranky. Unless you bring the battery, this rocket won't be going anywhere. I'll get it now, said Thomas. I'll be back faster than you can say. Sonic boom. Thomas raced back down the tracks towards Napford Station. Starship Thomas scans the galaxy for signs of alien life. Oh no, Kana, do you need some help? Asked Thomas as he screeched to a halt beside Kana, who was stuck in the mud. Starship Thomas to the rescue, cried Thomas. I will give you a rocket boost. Three, two, one, push. Thanks, Thomas, Kana said as he sped off towards the docks. The wind was blowing hard as Thomas continued to race towards the Napford station. A tree had blown over and Gordon was stopped on the track up ahead. Sandy and Car Carly appeared alongside Gordon. Oh no, cried Sandy. Gordon's coupler is broken. There's no time to fix it, said Gordon. Thomas, can you take the nose cone for me? Thomas grinned. Me? Take the no most important part? Absolutely, he shouted. At the dock, Cranky lifted the nose cone and 
fit it in, in place at the top of the rocket. I got to deliver something important after all, said Thomas. And where's the battery? Asked Cranky. The rocket can't take off without it. It controls the steering. Every piece is important. Suddenly, the sky lit up with lightning. Ah, uh, bolts. It's going to rain and the launch will be ruined, cried Diesel. If I go at super light speed, I can get the battery in time, said Thomas. The sky was now dark with storm clouds. I don't think I'm going to make it. Even at super light speed, said Thomas, sighed Thomas, that it's a good thing that your friend is the fastest train on Sodor, said Kana, pulling up behind Thomas. This time, I'm going to give you a rocket boost. Whoosh. Beep, beep. Here I come, said Thomas with the battery safely on board. He had nearly reached the docks when a strong gust of wind blew some rocks onto the track. Oh no, moon rocks, cried Thomas. He hit the rocks and car wheeled through the air and landed with a crash in front of the launch pad. The rocket battery flew off the flatbed or car and soared through the sky. The battery hit the side of the rocket and clink, bang, plink, dropped into the battery slot. Hurrah, cheered all the engines. Rain, cried Piercy as a few drops hit the ground. Quick, hit the countdown button, shouted Diesel. Kana whizzed over to the button and hit it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off. All the engines looked up. The rocket was now a tiny speck against the moon. Who, who knew something so small would be so cool? <clears throat> said Sandy. <clears throat> said Sandy. I guess everyone's job was important, said Thomas, no matter how big or small. Rocket-tastic. <laughs>